Hey everybody, look, you're not lazy, all right? If you are feeling unmotivated and you're trying to figure out why you feel so unmotivated, you're not lazy, all right? It's not that you're not motivated to do something greater in your life, to live a greater life. It's because you have been existing in survival mode. Survival mode can be exhausting. All right, so if this resonates with you, then this video is for you. Keep watching. Thank you guys again for joining me for another episode of the Tamra Tamra Collective where dreams have no filter. Let's get into breaking the chains of survival mode. Let's talk about it. So, you know, we get all these messages coming at us from all directions about being motivated and staying motivated and fighting through procrastination and ideas of perhaps you're just lazy and you don't want more. But I want to present to you that that is not the case. That is not the case. For so long, when you have existed from an identity of just surviving another day, surviving an existence that is okay, surviving a job that you hate, surviving a career that you want to get out of, surviving a relationship that may have been okay for a certain amount of time, but now you're just like, this is, this is not even me anymore. I want out. Every day, consistently telling yourself, just make it through another day. Just make it through another day. Just make it through another day. That has become your identity. To live in that state of just get through another day, that is exhausting. That could be why you're not feeling motivated. And here's the funny thing about that. We know that there's more for us. We know that we've settled, but yet at the same time, it can even feel exhausting to even switch up what, from what we've been used to, right? So let's talk about a few things. We're going to talk about how we get, how we adopt that survival identity and what we can do to get from surviving to thriving in our lives every day. So we know if you've listened to my videos, you know, I talk about programming and allowing ourselves being open to the possibility of reprogramming who we are so that we can exist from an abundant identity so we that we can exist from a prosperous identity where we are living out our dreams every single day does that equal to a perfect life no but we're talking about fulfillment even beyond fulfillment we're talking about living a soul fulfilled life all right and we have to get beyond the programming to think that that's not possible for us. So how do we get to this survival identity? How do we take on that identity? It's learned. We learn it from growing up. It comes from that hard work fallacy. And yes, I'm calling hard work a fallacy because hard work, okay, well, when does the hard work end? When does it end? No one ever told us that. Everyone always said, growing up, I know I'm not the only one who heard this, well, you have to work really hard to get whatever you want. Well, that leaves no room to receive. That leaves no room for ease and flow. And I'd like to invite you to take on the perspective of no. Hard, hard work is not necessary. 
and that's a new one for you, right? But it isn't. Then another way we get to survival mode is from settling. How do we do that? Settle. How do we settle? Well, for example, if you are in a career that may have worked for maybe maybe two years, it worked. And now you're thinking, I don't even want to do this anymore. I don't even want to be an employee anymore. I want to be an employer. But yet over time, you've told yourself, well, you know, I should just be grateful that I have a job or I should just be grateful that I have this career. That is settling. Just because you're in a situation and you want more, it doesn't mean that you have not been grateful for your life or you know what it, what has come to you into into your life up until that point. You can be grateful but yet desire more. You can have you can be both. You can be grateful, but you can know that there is something more for you. And so to avoid looking like or appearing like we're ungrateful, we settle for things that are quite frankly beneath us. And that includes relationships. Okay. So here are a few things, how to move from survival mode to thrive, thriving, how to move from survival mode to consistently thriving in every day of our lives. All right. First, we have to determine or we have to identify and recognize what survival feels like. Okay. Survival feels like entrapment in your mind, which translates into your body. How does that translate into your body? Well, if you are going about your day, and you're feeling tense for some reason, you're clenching your hands and you don't even know it, you're walking around and your shoulders are tight, that's what it can feel like because you've trained your mind because you've told yourself, well, I'm just, I just gotta get through this day. So now your body has braced itself for another day to survive. Well, guess what? that constantly bracing yourself to survive your body can only handle that stress for so long until illness sets in your body is saying well wait a minute this is presenting an imbalance so now your insides are trying to regulate themselves your cells are trying to regulate themselves the molecules are trying to regulate themselves and that can manifest into an illness just because your body is trying to find some type of harmony and to try and find some type of balance through your, through your survival mode, okay? So it's important to recognize what that feels like in your body. Once you've identified how that survival mode feels in your body, first in your mind and in your body, now you can say, okay, I know what survival feels like, but what does thriving feel like? Well, to begin to allow your body, your nervous system to adjust to what thriving feels like, get a vision in your mind of what thriving looks like to you. Again, this is how does thriving look like to you. To you, thriving in your life could look like you're traveling once a month, twice a month, to exotic places, writing your books. Thriving to you could be like having a farm, growing your own food, creating your own products, creating your own beauty products, selling those beauty products to the world. Thriving to you could be like having an online business, 
or businesses. Thriving to you could be like having a huge house where all of your family lives so that you can always be constantly surrounded with your family members every day. Thriving, what does thriving to you look like? Now, when you have that vision, when you decide what that looks like for you, instantly you're going to get feelings and emotions. What I would invite you to do is identify what those feelings are. Identify what those emotions are. Also, once you do that, it's easy to face what you settled for. It's easy to face what you've settled for because what that does, when you face what you've settled for, then you can uncover behavior patterns with no judgment, no blame. You're just observing. For example, I'll go back to the job a career. Perhaps because you've been in survival mode, a behavior pattern that you have developed is to always have a job that you don't like versus accepting that thriving for you is to have your own business. Again, this can be applied to relationships, your living situation. Perhaps you've always lived in a city when really in reality you want to live in on the countryside in the countryside perhaps you've always settled for jobs that have a certain salary that only pay a certain amount of money that behavior pattern developed and it manifested into having that type of job with that type of salary Again, you're only observing the behavior pattern. You're not judging because now you know, well, that's what I did in survival identity. But now I know what thriving identity looks like. Now I know what that feels like. Now I can put on this new identity. Okay. Also, when you uncover those behavior patterns, it uncovers the why that led to certain behavior patterns. The why, it could be nine times out of 10 is from programming. It could come from what you heard in the past. It could come from, you know, what you learn behavior, you know, and what I would say is you don't have to necessarily go down the rabbit hole to uncover the why that led to those certain behaviors. For some of you, it could be helpful. Maybe not. That's up to you. That's a personal thing. Also, what you can do is to get to go from surviving to thriving. You can begin to practice self-care. What do I mean by that? We know self-care, you know, that's a popular phrase. It gets, you know, tossed around, used in all marketing, advertising, which is fine. But what does that mean? So self-care, what I'd like to invite you to consider is that self-care involves meditation, creativity, and considering your surroundings. So meditation. Why am I telling you to consider meditation and self-care? Because meditation, I don't want to say forces you to get quiet, but it does force you to get quiet. Okay. That quietness, that stillness takes you within. It takes you within so that you can address and observe those patterns, those behavior patterns that infused that survival identity. It causes you to face those, those patterns, right? Also, uh, creativity. 
as a form of self-care. Well, what does creativity do? How does creativity move you from surviving to thriving? Well, when I mentioned about how I would invite you to uh, decide what thriving looks like to you, that involves creativity. How? Because if you've never done that before, if you don't know what thriving looks like to you, when you go to sit down and write it out, it's taking your mind beyond where you have been, beyond where you have been thinking. And that involves creativity. It involves you just allowing your imagination to be free. So that in itself is being creative. All right. Also, I want you to consider your surroundings. Consider how you live. Consider your social circle. Are you inspired by the people that are around you? Or if you leave those people, after you get through spending time with those people, do you feel drained and exhausted? Perhaps during this time, while you are putting on this new identity, you may need to minimize how often that you, that you are around certain people. It may not mean that you need to cut these people out of your life, but for this time, for this new consciousness that you're embracing, for this new identity, that you're putting on, that you have tapped into, that you're embracing, it may require for you to limit your contact with certain people. And only you know that. Only you can identify those people. All right? Look at how you live. So, for example, are you holding on to clutter? Do you notice that you're holding on to broken things, broken furniture, scratched up furniture? Get that stuff away from you. Get it away from you because that is not adding to your thriving identity at all. All right? Clothes. Do you have clothes or just things that you just have in your house or wherever you live that you're not even using? That is congestion. That's causing congestion, of course, externally. And it is infusing that internal congestion that builds up when we live from survival identity. So, ultimately, what you want to know is that to move from survival identity to thriving, you have to understand and know that you deserve real, true, whole, entire fulfillment every day of your life and in all aspects of your life. We were not put here to survive every day. We were not. We were put here to experience flow and fulfillment in every single way and in every aspect of our life. All right? So break the chains of survival mode. I believe those of you that are watching that are in survival mode, those chains have been broken for you. All right? I know that. And so leave me a note in the comments on how this video resonated with you. If you have any questions on anything that you'd like for me to elaborate on in this video, let me know uh, in the comments. I'd also like to tell you to, to be on the lookout for a new book that I will be finished with here pretty soon. I won't even put a date on it, but it is almost complete where I tap into where I talk about and discover and review how to move from survival to thriving mode 
but it's centered around money. Okay, I'm excited for this book. Um, it's just, it, it, it's an amazing piece and, and I'm excited to put it out there to you guys. Um, but I have to control my excitement so I can make sure I put out something that is complete and something that is useful. But just be on the lookout for that offering. All right. If, again, if you have any questions for me, leave them in the comments. Uh, but until next time, cheers.